So the iPhone 12 and 12 Pro are probably gonna be coming out pretty soon. So I thought it would be a good idea to just go back and revisit the iPhone 11 Pro because I know there are a lot of people trying to decide if they should just pick one up now or wait for the iPhone 12. But the question is, is the iPhone 11 Pro still worth it in late 2020? Let's find out. I'm Kevin from Peacock Inside Tech and this is my Apple iPhone 11 Pro review after one year. After having the iPhone 11 Pro Max for about a year now, it's in great shape. It looks really good. There are no scratches, not on the backside, not on the stainless steel frame. Everything looks great just like when I took it out of the box. I do have a screen protector on the front because for some odd reason, Apple's displays always get these small micro scratches and it's pretty annoying. How about you guys let me know if you have the same problem with the iPhone's displays with little micro scratches and if you put a screen protector on it down in the comments. I've kept the phone in this Apple brown leather case for most of the time, just in case I did drop it. So the 11 Pro Max's hardware has aged really well and to be honest, I think it would probably look just as good after another year. The 6.5 inch Super Retina display on the iPhone 11 Pro Max still looks good even a year later and even after looking at phones with a QHD resolution and a 120 Hertz display. The 11 Pro and Pro Max probably have one of the most color accurate displays out there, at least to my eyes. The big notch is still there too, and you kind of forget about it after a while. It's only when I switch to a newer Android phone with a small hole punch in the display for the camera cutout and switch back to the iPhone do I really notice it. It would be nice to see a 120 hertz display on the next iPhone, but the rumors say that it probably won't happen. It also would be nice to see a smaller notch, but let's see what happens at the new iPhone 12 event. Speaking of the notch where Face ID lives, Face ID works really good now. It scans my face at the weirdest angles and I'm surprised myself sometimes that it can actually scan my face how I looked at my phone. It's my preferred biometric way of unlocking my phone. Well, except in COVID-19 times right now where I always have to wear a mask, it's pretty annoying to always have to put in a six digit code, but I still love having Face ID. I test a lot of smartphones, obviously, so that I can review them, but I always have one SIM card in my iPhone 11 Pro Max because it's just so reliable and because of the Apple ecosystem. And things like my banking app and a lot of other apps just still work a little bit better on iPhone than they do on Android devices. Also, for example, Instagram. The video and image compression is a lot better on the iPhone and you can really see the difference when you upload a video to your story. Also, a lot of apps still get updates on the iPhone first, even Google apps sometimes, which is kind of weird. iOS 13 has also received a lot of updates to keep the phone running smoothly because there were a couple small bugs when iOS 13 dropped last year. And with the recent release of iOS 14, the 11 Pro is kind of like a new phone with all the new features like widgets, app library, and picture in picture. I know for all the Android fans, these are pretty standard features, but they are a little more polished and uniform on iOS. The overall performance is also still really good after one year. The OS, everything is fast and smooth. I don't think anyone can complain about the performance. Also, the battery life is still pretty unmatched by any phone that I've tested over the past year. This is the only phone that I've had that I can get through two full days of normal to heavy usage. This is also one of the main reasons that I always keep the iPhone 11 Pro Max with me so that I don't have to worry about charging when I'm out. And now onto the cameras. The iPhone 11 Pro brought big improvements to the iPhone with this new three camera setup on the back. You get a standard 12 megapixel camera, a 12 megapixel 2X telephoto camera, and an ultra wide camera. You also get a 12 megapixel selfie camera. And I like what Apple did. They didn't really focus on megapixel counts or zoom lenses. They just tried to make sure that all four cameras performed as similar as possible, no matter what camera you use. And it worked. I get similar performance from each camera with the photos and the videos. 
video is still, in my opinion, the best on iPhone. No other phone I've tested can match it. I record a lot of my B-roll for my videos with the iPhone. So needless to say, the iPhone 11 Pro Max's cameras are still great even after one year. The one complaint that I have about the iPhone in general, which really isn't a complaint, is that the experience is pretty much always the same, which can be good and kind of boring, to me at least. The design always looks pretty similar, the iOS experience is always the same, and it gets a little boring. But with that being said, that is one of the main reasons that everything works so well because everything is optimized, everything works the way it's supposed to most of the time, so I guess you just can't have everything. So if a higher refresh rate display isn't important to you or any of the rumored features that are coming to the iPhone 12, then I can definitely recommend the iPhone 11 Pro and Pro Max still in late 2020, especially now because they are cheaper. I'll drop some links in the description. And like always, thanks for watching my video and please subscribe if you want to see more of my videos in the future. And if you like this video, a thumbs up would be great and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.